Hey everyone, so in this video I'm going to be talking about something that drives me mad that some people do in Git and it makes a complete mess of the history and I, well, I'll talk through this in a sec. And you won't really see this if you're using feature branches and PRs, but if you're in a team which just commits to main and some team members just blindly pull and push, then you've probably seen this. And yeah, I call it the erroneous merge commit because it's merge commits and history being messed up, which just isn't needed because it's pointless. Okay, so let's, I'm going to jump over to a slide just to show you what I mean, but we'll be doing lots of demos as well, showing this in more detail. So here's an example of quite a neat commit log. So we've got an initial commit, but that's irrelevant for this. There could be a whole bunch of commits here. These are the bits we're interested in. So Bob's made a change. So he's someone else on the team. He's pushed it. All's good. Then I've made a change. I pushed it all's good. So this is quite a neat one. When people do this blind push and pulling, you see, you might see something that looks like this. Now this is the same scenario. Bob's pushed a change and then I've pushed a change, but it's made what's called the erroneous merge commit or what I call the erroneous, erroneous merge commit. Now there's some points to make here. First of all, this is pointless, this merge commit. There's no need for it. It's the same scenario as this. The second point to make is that it looks like Bob's change isn't in the main branch. Now, technically in Git, a commit isn't in a branch. A, a branch is just a pointer to a commit, like here. But as far as visualizations, Git log, GUIs and things, it looks like Bob's change is no longer in the main branch. It looks like it's a feature branch. Another point to make is, in this example, it's me that's done this pull and push and created this erroneous merge commit. But, so this is my commit, but it looks like Bob's, the changes in this commit are Bob's changes. Now, technically, again, in Git, a commit does not have changes in its a very cached snapshot of the entire repository. And if you want to know more about how that works under the hood, um, somewhere here will be a suggested link to another video I did explaining how Git works under the hood. But as far as GUIs and visualizations are concerned, when you're clicking through looking at the history, it looks like Bob's changes are in my merge commit, which is a bit weird. And it looks like Bob's changes no longer in the main branch, which is a bit weird. And then if people are doing this all the time, the, the history is just completely unreadable. It drives me mad. Ah. So let's jump over to Miro and let me explain what's happening here. So this is some commits. This could be quite long. Origin main, so the remote representation and my local working copy is completely up to date. It's just a clean slate. I'm creating a commit. So if I just move that over here, I've created a local commit that I haven't yet pushed. Which is quite common. You create a commit first before you push. It might've been a while since I've last fetched. So I've created a commit and now I wanna push this. In between me last doing a fetch and creating this, Bob has, or multiple people, have created commits that are in main. So actually this now looks like this in reality. And as soon as I do a fetch, then this is what I get. Now I should point out at this point that a pull is just a fetch and a merge. You can change it in the settings so it's a fetch and a rebase, but by default it's a fetch and a merge. And so by doing git in the command line type in git pull is actually doing those two commands. So a fetch gets the latest information about the remote representation of the latest that the remote server has, GitHub, Azure DevOps, whatever. And so we can see it in our Git tooling. It does not, the fetch does not change my working copy. It does not change this. So by doing a fetch, I now see this. If I do a merge now, 
and remember that a poll is a fetch and a merge, then it will create a merge commit, which has two parents here. So effectively, this is now here. And then if I push, so I've done a pull, and then I do a push, then we've got this. And this is the erroneous merge commit. So it's important to remember that this branch divergence here, this only happened locally. It did not happen anywhere else on my machine, also other than my machine. So if I undo this, in fact, go to that point. So at this point, that commit and this commit do not exist anywhere but my machine. If I go back a bit further, At this point, this does not exist anywhere but my machine. So as far as, if I just move these to the side a bit, as far as the rest of the world is concerned, the history is nice and neat. So it's at this point when we should be rebasing. So if I take this up, uh, so without going full fully into what rebasing is, if you think about the name rebase, you're rebasing it you're changing the base technically what it's doing is replaying commits but for just to visualize this you can think about it as redoing the base now, it, it is actually replaying this commit then this commit on top of it but yeah the, the, the point is it straightens this line out and then we can push our commit here and then we've got a nice straight line which kind of coincides with this, where we said we've now got this instead of this horrible mess here. Okay, so let's demo this scenario. So what I've done is I've got a, a PowerShell file, which basically simulates the scenario. So I ignore that this, this is removing some of the temporary directories we're about to create. So I can repeat this script. So then I'm making a new directory called git test, initializing git init, creating a temporary commit, giving it a remote origin. So this is just a temporary repo created in GitHub just so we can have a remote that two people, that me and Bob can share. Then I push this up to the server. Now note I've got a few aliases. This is just doing git push upstream and I'm forcing it so I can redo this script lots of times. Then this is actually the scenario we're dealing with. So I'm writing a file called dan2 and committing it locally, just calling it dan change, that's all, and not pushing it. Then Bob, so here I'm just cloning the whole repository into a different directory so I can pretend to be Bob, changing my username to Bob for this clone. And then I'm making a new file and committing it called Bob's change and pushing it. So it's just reproducing this case quite easily. So if I run this now, then if I do git log, then we can see I've got the initial commit and my change. I can't see Bob's change yet because I've not fetched. So if I blindly do git pull and do a quick git log, so you can see we've got the situation where we've got this erroneous merge commit, and then I'm blindly saying git push. And if we look at this, then we can see this mess is being pushed for the world to see. And this branch divergence was only on my machine initially. If I just view it in SmartKit, then we can see the scenario I described before. So this is my, my mistake, my merge commit, but it looks like it's got Bob's changes. Again, a commit doesn't have changes. It's just diffing the last one on its first parent and itself, which is Bob's changes. And it also looks like Bob's changes 
Bob's commit, which remember he initially pushed it and that was on the main branch. Or, yeah, but now it looks like it's in a feature branch. Now again, a, a commit is not in a branch. A commit is just a pointer. So a, a branch is just a pointer to a commit. So this, well, let's just have a look actually. If we do vim dot uh, git, and we can see if we look at refs heads that main a branch is literally just a pointer to a commit. So de55 is if we go to here de55. So that's just a pointer to that. It's nothing more. So we can't say that this is in the main branch. It's just inferred because the tooling will look at this pointer main. It will look at its first parent, which is this one, look at its first parent, which is this one, and kind of assume that's the main branch. Because this one has two parents and Bob's change is the second parent, then it's kind of assuming that's like a, it looks like it's a feature branch. But either way, when you're looking through the history, it looks like Bob's change is in a feature branch and it looks like my commit has Bob's changes in. So it's just a mess. So how do we do this properly? So I would say, so if we run this script again, so we're starting the scenario again. And I personally never use pull. I just don't use it. I always do fetch. So now if I do git log, we've got this initial scenario where there's where the remote is up to. I've got this commit that I've not yet pushed. I want to push it. So before I push, the first thing, thing I'm going to do is a git fetch. Now I'm using aliases, this is me to save me tapping git fetch, but it's just a shortcut. Then I can look at the log and I can say, oh, other people, in this case, Bob has pushed main. So main has got more commits on that I've not got. So I need to rebase. So I could do git rebase origin main. And that has straightened it up. So literally that one command has done what we did before. And I can now push this up. And if we look at it in our GUI, then we can see we've got this nice, clean, we've not got that erroneous merge commit. So to summarize, don't be that person that does the blind pull and push and makes that horrible, horrible history that's so unreadable. It's just so, so annoying. And hopefully you learned something as well. And when the video ends, there'll be a link to another video I did, which was a 50 minute talk about how Git works under the hood and the different object types. So some of the things I said where a commit doesn't, where a commit doesn't have, actually have changes, um, a commit isn't in an actual branch, all of that will make more sense after watching the video. So if you enjoyed this video, please remember to click like and subscribe and I will see you next time.